You, uh, you had some time off. You just came back. Congratulations. I, I love having you guys back. Thank you very you much. You had a little time off. We had a little bit of time off. We, we, work, we work through the break. So oh, we, do. we don't really have a break, but we, we had a couple of weeks off, and I took my, um, I took my son. I have a, a two-year-old, an American. Right. I have an American. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, have, you do. I have an American. You have an American, which is yes. That's the exactly. creepiest way to describe having a child. A child. That's a very British imperial way to describe yeah. a child. I have, I have, I have, I have an, an American, American with me. <laughs> I have brought him back. I shall go gather another. <laughs> uh, yeah, I took him to London for the first time <gasps> so he could see. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So, so he could see it. Yeah. Did I mean, he's two. Well, he's two. Yeah. So, you he know. He didn't really know what was happening. Not really. He saw red buses. <laughs> yeah. And that's all he has remembered from what was a very stressful trip. <laughs> Was it stressful? Yeah, cause well, cause, yeah, because he was just, he got sick on the plane and then he stayed sick while we were there. So he was just vomiting everywhere. <laughs> he trashed the hotel room like Keith Richards. Oh, oh my God. He, start, he just... started vomiting one, but I picked him up and he's just vomiting everywhere. It's the middle of the night. Like, yeah. like spraying vomit everywhere. <laughs> and I had to call down and say, he, my, my son has thrown up. And they said, where? And I said, everywhere. <laughs> You have to burn everything. He trashed his first hotel room. He trashed room. it. He trashed it. Yeah, it was like the Sex Pistols. Uh, yeah. But this is, you have to show him, this is where, this is where Daddy's from, and you're from London, That's right? That's right. This is where Daddy's from, and this is why he's 60% sad. <laughs> <laughs> Look what 60, Daddy escaped. 60 is a perfect 60%, amount. 60%. <laughs> it's a perfect That's right. amount. It's a, it's a dominant amount of sadness. <laughs> <laughs> but you can kind of keep it at bay. Yeah. Yeah, but do you remember uh, your first uh, paid comedy gig in, in London? Yeah, because the moment that you get paid for comedy is kind of an overwhelming moment, right? The first time, because it's your dream to do it anyway. And then when someone gives you money for it, this seems like some crime has happened. Yeah, so I remember I got, I got paid £25. I remember just looking at it, looking at that money, thinking, I can't believe I got paid for yeah. this. And I will say, the audience that night were probably mystified as well. <laughs> yeah, You're like, wait, he got paid Money for this? changed hands for the service <laughs> he provided? That seems uh, not economically... What job did you have before you were in comedy? Oh, uh, not many. I did comedy pretty quick. The most fun job I ever had uh, was I did... I filled in for maternity leave, answering the phones uh, for a guy who sold kitchen equipment. What I quickly became clear was stolen kitchen equipment. <laughs> in London. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I would answer the phones all day, and people would call up saying, tell Jim to call me back by 3 o'clock, or I'll <laughs> kill him. <laughs> what, what are you going to tell him? And I'll say, oh, he's, uh, he needs to call you by 3. Or, or, or you'll kill him. Or I'll <laughs> kill him. <laughs> there was every, every, every day. Though, every though? single day. And he would say, I'm never here, John. Understand, I'm never here. When that phone rings, I'm never here. Even if, even if I'm here, I'm never here. <laughs> And there was one guy that called up, because it, it was literally, like, still cement coming off the back of some of the kitchen equipment, because it had just been stolen. And this guy called up one day and went, I know he's there, I know he's there, where's my oven? And I, I put him on hold, and the guy, Jim, I probably should have changed his name, but anyway. Uh, his actual name was Jim. He, he said, uh, just tell him that we have an oven that would fit his kitchen perfectly that just came in last night. <laughs> and that did not calm him down. <laughs> but he, the craziest thing he sent me to do was he gave me £15,000 in cash, which is still the most amount of money I've ever held in my hands, and a knife. And he said, go and take this ac across London. And I, I said, what's the knife for? And he said, if someone tries to take the money, then you can fight back. And I said... <laughs> If someone tries to take it, I'm giving them the money and the knife. <laughs> You're just, down 15, 15 grand 15 and grand. a blade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's a crazy it job. It was fun, but it was fun. Yeah. Like, it was fun. Like, the, the, the jobs that suck your soul are the ones where there's no personalities there. And he had arguably too much personality. Yeah. Yeah. Did he know that you were a comedian? He kept saying. He, he knew that I was going to do comedy at night, and it mystified him. He said, well, well you're not funny here, though, John. <laughs> You've never made me laugh here. <laughs> You need to be funnier around here before you can go and be funny somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, were you out? Were you auditioning as well? Do you ever think? Did you ever audition to be an actor? Like audition for shows? And... No, no. Really, I'm not really much of an actor. I auditioned for one commercial back in London, and it was for a deodorant. Uh, I, c I can't remember which deodorant it was. I would say otherwise. <laughs> Jim. Uh, Jim. It was yeah. It was <laughs> Jim's deodorant. G, G, G Y M. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, it, and uh, it was like a, like a funny part, so I did the funny part in the audition, and then I'm sitting, there's people sitting in front of me, and they said, okay, can you take your shirt off now, please? <laughs> and I said, 
what? And they said, well, you know, at the end of the commercial, we want to do that. So I, I, w I wasn't ready to take my shirt off. <laughs> but, so I, I took it off, and the atmosphere in the room changed. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I heard one woman turn to the guy next to her and say, well, we, we don't definitely need that shot, do we? <laughs> Which was a very kind way to say something very hurtful. And then I had to put my shirt back on. And there's nothing less dignified than putting on a button-up shirt in front of it. There is a reason that strippers don't redress themselves on stage. Because <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad, Jimmy. Oh, my God. It's sad. To... <laughs> yeah. More with John Oliver when we come back, everybody. John Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> On and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's on and on and on.